In this lesson, we'll be jumping back to our sequence view and rendering our comp. Okay, so we're in 12 underscore begin here. And at the end of the last lesson, I saved a new version. So we'll go ahead and version up to that. And now we should be in version five. Um, we can also make sure of that by just going to the max version. That will work as well. Okay, let's double click and hop over inside of that composition. And everything looks pretty good, except that if I come back here towards the beginning, um, whenever we would see our dragon, let's actually um, come down here to our second transform and look from there. Right about here, you can tell the dragon has no motion blur. So let's come back in here and we'll re-enable those nodes by selecting them and hitting the D key. And we'll give that a second to calculate what that looks like now. And that looks much, much better. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this version or version up again, what whichever you prefer. We'll go ahead and just save a new version now that, that those have been re-enabled. So I'll save new comp version. So now we're gonna be version six. We'll go back out to our sequence view. And to render this, we wanna make sure we have the newest version. So I'm gonna hit the V key and you can see that Oh, this looks like this is actually version five. Let's go ahead and do a scan for versions and make sure um, that we're right on that. So select, hit the V key. There it is. There's version six. So you need to scan before you just hit the V key because it might not always come up. So now we have version six selected. That's the one we're going to be using. And that's the one that I want to render to my timeline. So um, we, if you recall earlier in our preferences, I'll just go to edit and go to preferences. In our threads and processes, we turned off the background rendering. So we have it set to don't start background renders. Um, and that's because I don't want it to be rendering um, and using any other processing when I'm trying to do something else. I just want to tell it to render when I want it to render. Um, now, I'm also going to change one other setting here before we, we begin rendering and set this to no render limits. This is a faster render, but it is going to not really allow you to do a lot. It is still going to be a background render, but it's going to slow it down. But since that's all this lesson is about, I want to show you that this is a quick way to work um, if you, you're just trying to get your render done. Um, so it's also going to use the most amount of power that we can use. Um, so Although it will slow Nuke down, it's a lot faster even than just using a write node because it's going to um, basically be rendering within multiple versions of Nuke in the background. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And then with this comp selected, I'm going to go up to Render and choose Render Selected Comp Containers. I don't want to render all my comp containers because I haven't done any work in any of the other ones. So we'll go ahead and tell that to render. And what you should see is this comp container turn from red to this kind of um, yellowish color. And you should see a little um, cancel button there. And then after a moment, once some of the frames are loaded, you see that we begin to get this progress bar at the bottom. And I can see a few frames that have rendered out. Now, if I scrub past those rendered frames, it will say that the um, those frames are not ready to be uh, viewed, basically. So we can't see it until the progress bar reaches that point. So that's a really amazing way that Nuke allows us to continue doing other things aside from writing out these frames. Um, and really, because that other comp is quite simple, um, we don't see a lot of slowdown. However, once we get into this comp, there is going to be a lot of compositing that we'll be doing that for this aerial shot. So it will be vital to um, 
be checking our settings for those threads and processes and just making sure that we are using a smart workflow. If we want to be doing stuff in the background, we would want to limit that render. Um, but really, we won't be um, providing you with the frames that will be rendered out. So this is kind of a good time for us to talk about this while we see this rendering. Um, every time that we set off a render like this, those frames are actually being created somewhere. And I can show you um, where that is going to be. So in your project files, I'm just gonna pull a window over there and we'll look at this together. So in your project files here, if we go into our Nuke Studio files, you can see this is where you're getting all of our files that we're working on here in the main version of Nuke Studio. Now if we go into my Nuke X scripts folder, then I've got the three shots that we've created comp containers for. And if I go into the street level one, you can see it gives me a folder for Nuke, so I can open that up. And this was all created automatically when that comp container was made, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we'll go into our script folder and you can see here's where all those versions are living so every time we create a new version that's what we get there and if I go into my renders folder here you can see a lot of different uh, renders and their timestamps and everything and this is what's being written out right now that's why we can see that changing so this folder, if you're looking at it and you're following along with me, it's probably not going to contain the same frames because you can see that every time you set off a render and um, then you make a change to that, those other frames that were there before are going to not matter anymore. You won't need them. So I don't wanna give you those frames and bog down your project files and make it a huge download. So I'm only going to be including the frames of the very last time that we do this together. So just know that sometimes your comp containers are going to look red in your project files, whereas mine might have this uh, yellow color or green in the video because once something is finished rendering, it's gonna turn green, but you're not gonna have those frames for your version of Nuke to reference. And that's okay, nothing's wrong, it's just that those aren't gonna be included in your project files because it would really be the same as every time you make a change and render it, I would be giving you that render. And that's just way more files than are necessary. So what I'm gonna do now is X out of this little finder window and we'll go ahead and um, I'm going to pause the recording until this finishes caching and then we'll go ahead and come back take a look at that together and then move on to our next lesson okay so our frames finished caching and i'm just going to back up a little bit and hit play and you can see what that shot looks like. And it's pretty great all in all with the um, camera shake, the smoke in the background, and the dragon flying by. We get a really nice looking shot all together. Okay, so in our next lesson, we're going to be moving on from our second dragon shot here to our aerial shot and this is going to be um, first and foremost a shot that we're going to need to get a good solid 3D track of so that we can hand that off to the 3D department to bring in the dragon which um, because we didn't do any kind of compositing that involved a 3D camera we skipped that part in this shot although that was necessary to get the right depth and all of that for the dragon so we'll be seeing Seeing that part of the process here in this shot so you can really get a feel for how much is going to go into creating something like this and then we'll be able to use that camera solve to add other things into our shot to get some really realistic 3d depth for things like smoke and uh, fire and those types of things so stick around and in our next lesson we'll be tracking and solving this second shot